iPhone 15 Pro in cinema mode. Like if I hold up an object in front of me, it's fuzzy. If I bring it towards me, I think it comes into focus. And if I hold it back behind me, it's fuzzy again. Like it's doing all the right things. Can you immediately tell that this is a phone and not a mirrorless camera? You probably can. This is a photography channel and you're a photography audience. But put basically any of your non-photography friends down in front of this thing for a second and I'll bet they'll say camera. Especially if you're watching this back on a phone. On a bigger screen, the effect is kind of still lacking. With hair for sure, I'll bet we're still two or three iterations of this technology away from some kind of breakthrough for dealing with hair when doing this sort of pretend shallow up the field. This is the same shot through my A7S III. Both of these shooting in 4K, although the phone does so much post-processing that you don't have control over, unless you go into log or ProRes mode, but then you're not allowed to use the cinema effect, which is kind of the whole point, at least the point I'm making. It adds so much sharpening and saturation, and with whatever it's doing to get the cinema mode effect, kind of like a live green screen effect or whatever it's doing, that it hardly looks like 4K to me at the end. Really clear when zooming in. So here's 4K shot through my A7S III, but way cropped in so it's just my head and shoulders versus that same thing with the phone. Supposedly the same resolution being shot here with both of these. First, let's talk about the good things before getting into the gripes. And I'm gonna be switching back and forth from iPhone shots to camera shots throughout this whole video in case that's all you really care about in this comparison. I think this picture's pretty good. I'm looking at it on my monitor over here. Especially again, when you view it back on a phone and not on a computer screen, it looks pretty legit. Someone could pretty easily do a whole talking head YouTube channel with this exact setup and it would look better than someone with the nice camera that didn't understand the settings. I do have a pretty robust lighting setup going on here with two soft boxes on one side for a key light and another one on the other side as a fill light. So this isn't what it'll look like in just any room with regular lighting. But I'd say this is totally passable as a high production value shot if you like shooting at 24 millimeters great if you have a small room. Also, because of the USB-C port, I can plug in one of these USB-C hubs that I already have that has an HDMI port on it, and that means I can use a monitor to see what the phone is seeing. Something I personally find super helpful when setting up these types of videos. Get that fun little yellow box all my head around. I am aware that this was already available through the lightning to HDMI adapter, but I don't have one of those, and I have plenty of these. And shoot, the good things end there. Gripes. My biggest gripe is that I don't like shooting 24 millimeter for these kinds of shots. I just prefer a longer lens, totally a personal preference. But I have this huge space, it's really cluttered back there and it always will be. And I think everything just looks a lot better at 85 millimeters. So much less distracting stuff in the background. I mean, look at this same shot at 85 millimeters. Isn't this just so much more premium? The background is smoother and less distracting. You don't really see all that crap back there. You just kind of see shapes and colors and loveliness. 24, 85. 24, 85. I love shooting at 85. It is too bad the iPhone 15 Pro won't let you shoot at 85. As you move the iPhone back and then zoom the camera in, that's where things start to fall apart for cinema mode. I'm gonna set that up now so you can see it. They did not make this effect available for the telephoto lens, the 3X lens. You can shoot in 1X, which is their 24 millimeter equivalent, and then 2X, which you're seeing here, which is just a clever software zoom at a 48 millimeter equivalent. So it's a software zoom into the center of a 24 millimeter shot. This is a 48 megapixel sensor, so you would expect a 2X zoom to be an equal number of native pixels, and therefore equally sharp, but it isn't. These sensors are really, really small, and I have some guesses as to what's going on here. In the 1X mode, I would bet that they're using all 48 megapixels, and then in real time, frame by frame, super sampling down to 4K. 4K is only eight megapixels of a shot, but then in order to zoom in, they have an even smaller patch of that same very small sensor. So half the width and half the height is a quarter of the same area, math, which means this 2X zoomed in shot is made using a quarter of the total amount of data going into the phone. The result is, it does a worse job of the effect. The key out sort of misses around the edges more. Although still, looking at it on a phone, it's pretty good, it's pretty solid, but uglier than the 1X version. And they don't even let you switch to the 3X lens, the optical 3X zoom lens, which is a 72 millimeter equivalent, a very pleasant looking portrait length. A guy could say it might as well even be an 85. I don't know if that's because this iteration of this technology requires the LiDAR sensor and it can't reach that far, but I'm bummed about it for sure. I will say that for casual B-roll, like if you're a blogger or whatever, the stabilization on this new phone is very, very good. Like shooting while turning and walking, this might as well be gimbal footage, but it's not, it's a phone. And if you're not looking for the fake shallow depth of field, it looks pretty good. I think this is a great blogging tool for sure, especially when the alternative is holding a big robot arm. If you wanna use a backlight, a rim light in your shot, absolutely not. Let me go set that up really fast. 
This is a way that I shoot. On a mirrorless camera, I like this sharp outline around my body, stylistically separating me from the background. But on the iPhone 15 Pro, all this does is kind of highlight what the phone is doing, cutting me out of the background, and it looks weird. Yeah, you get some, get some halo effects. I'm actually really curious how this handles a haze machine. That actually kind of fixes it. So, is this technology ready? I will say there's this real estate channel I've been watching. My wife and I are building a house right now. Video up here if you're interested. So I'm taking in a bunch of mortgage YouTube. And there's this broker that I've been watching. And the whole first video that I saw of hers, I didn't even notice until she like flipped her hair in some kind of way and the effect broke. And I was like, oh damn, she's on a phone. And these things aren't that important in the grand scheme of things. Your storytelling, your lighting, your audio should all take precedence over how much blur you have in the background of your shot. Although, get a smoke machine, this thing is kicking ass. I am not making this video to say that if you're not using a real camera that you're doing it wrong. And this effect is incredible. It so closely mimics the look you get with the big camera under a bunch of particular conditions. You only get this one focal length. You have to like shooting at 24 millimeters. You really can't hold up thin or intricate things. They won't focus. You should probably be wearing a hat. But for the Graham Steffens of the world, those of you who make videos sitting in a relatively small room with natural lighting and you're just talking to a camera, iPhone 15 Pro cinema mode is ready for prime time. I mean, look at how, like if I hold up an object in front of me, it's fuzzy. If I bring it towards me, I think it comes into focus. And if I hold it back behind me, it's fuzzy again. Like it's doing all the right things. It's pretty incredible.